Now I want to talk about adding secondary animation to your performance capture. Secondary animation is the animation that happens because of other animations. The head is rotating and the trunk and the ears react automatically. And this is adding personality and life to the character. So if this is a person in a motion capture suit, you're going to get all this secondary motion for free. The way to set this up is using Control Rig. You might be familiar with Control Rig as the primary path for animating an engine. There's lots of examples out there. Um, and traditionally, you set these things up and you animate by hand. But Control Rig has some simulation nodes that we're going to talk about that can actually help with things happening in real time. This is where there's springs and jiggles and all kinds of interesting things. The relay is probably the most useful and versatile. Uh, it basically creates a spring force through translation. So you put in a control, in this case it's that yellow control cube, and the relay node runs and using strength and dampening and blending forces, it tries to match the position. So what you get is a resultant transform, in this case a translation that is trying to get to the spot but having a hard time so it's overshooting and giving a spring-like effect. Here's an example of it being used. Uh, the tip of the trunk is trying to reach uh, that red ball and it's being delayed because it's trying to shoot and it's overshooting so it gives this effect. Here you can see how we hook this up. We have two controls at the tip of the trunk. One is the relay node and one is the main control which is animatable. So you can actually animate the tip and then have the relay version trying to reach it and so then you can draw that animation by hand. You'll also notice there's a to world and a from world node in this and that's because by default, this relay node inside Control Rig only works in the space of the Control Rig. So only where this control is moved, it explicitly affects this relay node. If anything outside, like the actor, the object itself, in Control Rig, or in the, the scene, was moved, this would not be affected by that. So, But by adding the to world and the from world, it basically means this relay effect is happening in the main level so all the forces that apply to moving that that actor are also going to be calculated in the relay node and here you can just see the trunk is made up of four controls that uh, create a spline and so any of these controls can be animated and that spline will conform and then the chain of bones will follow that spline so this is just sort of behind the scenes how this works and in this case only the tip is being has a verlay node that's wiggling around but uh, you could put this on more than just the bottom depending on how you wanted the trunk to look so in addition to translation spring effects you can also do rotational spring effects and this one's called a spring interpolate uh, it's just as rotation you, if you move it around it won't react so here uh, we set up for the ears. I wanted some controls so I could put the ears in whatever rotational position I wanted, whether it's forward, back, up, and down. But then I also wanted them to react to the head and to the body. And you'll also see here I've got the controls for the ear, but then I go to into the world, I do my spring interpolation, and then I go back from the world into the control rig. So these are not necessary if you're only animating something with your controls, but if it's going to be on an object that gets moved around on the exterior, uh, then you want to include those. So here you can see I'm when I move the controls, I rotate the controls, the ears move, but if I rotate the whole head, the ears move too, and they react to that. 
here is the example of me in a mokapi suit. I am dancing and the trunk and the ears are all reacting in a mostly appropriate way. It's not a true physics simulation. So if that head was looking straight up or upside down, the trunk is is going to go towards the control, so it's not actually going to to follow all of the the true gravity, and it could clip with my hand or my body, so it does not have collisions. So it has limitations, but it also has a lot of great benefits. Another node that is useful is an aim node. Um, this doesn't have the same level of dynamics, but it can be very nice in um, real time, making sure characters or things are looking in the right location or pointing in the right direction. So this is very handy. You can even do this after the fact if you're for virtual production and correct eye lines and, and uh, air, what things are looking at and pointing at, guns, aiming. This is very handy. You can also use it for pistons. You could say, okay, the left one points to the right and the right side points to the left. And so if you had a character like a C-3PO character where there were hydraulics, like a mech warrior, um, you could put these throughout the, the joints and all of the hydraulics will just dynamically work while you're doing your performance capture, which is really nice. We also have some time-based nodes. So this is a Kalman filter or an average over time. And this smoothly tries to go. And this works in translation, rotation, and scale. So it's pretty handy. It's not just one. So uh, this is a nice way to have something try to match something else, um, like a drone flying. You could give it the, spa the positions of where the drone should be, and it will you know, move and try to hit that position. It's going to be very handy. And then you have something called a value over time. This is like a delay. So it will, the cube will do whatever the control does. It just delays by a certain number of frames or seconds, right? Uh, and I can show you an example of this. Here I've got one control for the, the whole, all the fingers, one hand. And this could be being driven by a Xbox controller, a trigger, something, a MIDI slider. And uh, each of the fingers gets a delay and then it gets a multiplied value so each finger moves it does the same type of motion but it does it at a different time and at a different rate so because this character didn't need to do anything complicated like play the violin it just needed to have a creepy opening and closing uh, we were able to puppeteer a really nice complicated looking hand motion but with one control same thing with the mouth here. We can take the jaw open from the live link phase stream and here in an animation blueprint we can get that live link stream and we can pipe it into the control rig and here the jaw opening uh, we have a right and left trigger and the, the control because the stick for the Xbox controller so each thing can drive multiple characters so you could have one person in a motion capture suit the secondary animation going on, and then you could have another person holding an Xbox controller that is adding other pieces of information, like the the, the closing of the of the eyes, the blinking, the looking at stuff. You can you can uh, drive a number of different properties. So, what about collisions? Though I mentioned before that that the these simulation nodes they don't actually have true collision, but you can actually trace a sphere into the world in this case the visible channel and you can actually get information about the the world your character is in so you could be animating a character in this case it looks like a car but um, this this car has actually there's a trace being done from the spline down to the to, to the surface and then it moves the car there and it rotates it to the correct orientation so this could be a character that is walking around in motion capture, but it, its position is being dropped down and placed on uneven terrain. It typically is very difficult to match the terrain in motion capture volume with the terrain in a CG world. And this, you could use these kinds of tools 
to trace down and uh, line things up. And the nice thing about this is uh, this is happening real time in the editor, right? So if you're making changes to this world and you need to modify and adjust objects, uh, terrain, uh, the character or whatever you're doing, you have hooked up, is going to appropriately uh, adjust. So this makes a, a virtual production, uh, certainly a visualization environment where things are always, you're trying new things out, you're moving things around. Um, and so it's very adaptive and it um, can be very useful to quickly uh, put things together. So good luck.